Hola, me llamo Genesis, mucho gusto. Oh. <laughs> Aku si Genesis, kena kaga laka me kali laka. Oh, tabari jela lang gani Genesis, nino fura ho kukuta na na wewe. Oh, <laughs> oh ane ase yo tonne Genesis me da. Oh, tanga wo yo. Konnichiwa, what is a Genesis desu? Hajime mashite, doshiro shuku. Eh. That's all that I have. Now, what languages were those, Genesis? Um, well, English, Spanish, um, Filipino, Swahili, Korean, and Japanese. Wow, you are <laughs> so amazing and so talented. I was here at the Y, at the men's lab, waiting for my son and started talking to Genesis. And she was telling me her story of being homeless, how she taught herself all these languages. How old are you? Well, I'm 17. 17. And what did you say you learned from being homeless? Um, one thing that I could definitely say I learned is that you don't let being homeless just stop you from pursuing what you want. You know, a lot of the time being homeless, people just believe that, you know, well, you really can't do anything. But that's really not the case. Being homeless was able to allow me to have examples in my life of what I wanted to be and things that I could do. I picked up a lot of languages from the schools as I would move from a shelter to another shelter. And I picked it up from kids who spoke to me, other people who were homeless, and so on and so forth. And it was just something that was incredible to me to be able to connect with so many different people with just a few words from their language. One thing that I, I remember, um, a quote from Nelson Mandela is, if you speak to a man in a language he understands, you speak to his mind. But if you speak to a man in his language, you speak to his heart. And I take that quote with me everywhere that I go because that definitely is true. I love the expressions on people's faces when I surprise them. And it also let, allowed me to be able to participate in a lot of other things and to be able to help out people. And I think that, you know, in a world like this, it's really good to know a different language and be able to help out each other because skin color may be what people believe separates us but what really separates us is our way of thinking our principles and what we believe should be right and wrong unity is something that's important and being homeless not only taught me that colors and everything else didn't matter but it also allowed me to know that i'm more than my situation and i believe that everybody should believe that Wow, <laughs> that, wow, you're going to have me start crying. I'm sorry. And no, in a good way, because um, I'm going to say this. I, I was feeling, this is like off the subject, but hey, keep it real. <laughs> Just recently, um, there was a situation where a lady went and killed, you probably heard about it, that boy. Did you hear about that situation? Yeah. It was a Caucasian lady. She went in, she was a police officer. And she went into a black man's house and just, because she didn't like the, his color, killed him. And that. you heard about that story? Yeah. And so then the young boy went ahead and at the court hugged hugged the white woman and the, the judge did. And my brother posted on Facebook. He posted on Facebook that he was teared up because of it. And I just felt an outrage in my heart. I'm like... This woman just out, just cold bloodedly killed him, you know. And um, so, what you just said, there was so there were some words between my brother and I, you know, because of this, and because of different viewpoints of how we saw it, you know. And it's something that you just said, and you, I want you to repeat it again. That what really divides us is what our way of thinking and our principles. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, what unites us, though? Um, what unites us is knowing that these are what separates us. Once we're able to identify the problem, we're able to be united in a way that says, I may not agree with everything that you say, but there is a common ground that we both have. And once we're able to find that common ground, we can create sort of a bond. Family members don't agree with each other all the time, but they would never just say, you know, I hate you and just push somebody away. I think being able to recognize that we don't agree with each other, we'll be able to find some common ground. Because racism and um, prejudice 
all of none of that is born into you it's it's taught to you but the best thing about these things the only good thing about racism and prejudice is that it can be untaught and once we're able to identify that that's something that we can do i feel that maybe we'll be able to come close to a common ground with everybody but having feelings about you know having feelings of anger or an outrage those those are you know those are common feelings for topics like this and i feel that you know being able to express that that's how you feel you know that's a step closer into what we're trying to get to which is a common ground some may feel outrage some may feel sadness but at the same time there's just a a feeling of not liking it mm -hmm. i feel like when it comes to the world what's separating us now is we're, no one's admitting that it's it's a problem that feeling a certain way about this no one's saying that that's okay and but that's what's separating a lot of people right now is just well you don't feel the same way that i do so we can't we there's no way that we could work together mm -hmm. but once you're able to identify that we we are and that we can find a common ground even if it might take us a long time that's where unity comes in mm -hmm. you're an old soul you've been told that i know <laughs> i know you have you need to make some changes and you make you make me feel I'm about to be 50 and you're how old? I'm 17. 17. So you make me feel proud that seriously, I'm serious talking real like you know that our future generation is really making a difference now. Especially this whole little group here at the YMCA. I'm not kidding. This leadership group that Michael has with you guys is amazing. You know, so keep up the good work. And what would you what like, what would you give to people? What would you say to people that are going through homelessness? And a lot of people we don't even know. Like, at one point, like I said, I was sleeping out of a van, you know? I, nobody knew that, you know? And um, and sacrificed my kids living somewhere else. You know, we had just came back from Oregon and a whole bunch of stuff happened with racism. And, um, you know, what what advice would you give someone that's going through homelessness right now? Well, I would tell them you're way more than your situation. You know, when it comes to homelessness, there's just like a bunch of statistics that people who are homeless, they want to be that way. Nobody wants to be homeless. Nobody <laughs> is a child and says, when I grow up, I want to be homeless. Nobody says that. But because that happens, we shouldn't keep it in people's minds that because you are homeless, that's who you are. Who you are as a person who has a dream, who has a life. Don't let something like this just stop you from that. This may be just a little pitfall, but this is also a lesson to teach you, you know, that there are other things that you can do and what you shouldn't do. Um, when I was homeless, there was a reason that I became homeless and I had to learn that being homeless was bad, but now I know what not to do. So I don't repeat the same steps to become homeless again. And once I realized I was far more than my situation, that I could do far more than what was previously thought for me, I was able to find things that I liked. And I feel that being homeless also made me grateful for a lot of things, um, even shoes. It's all right. Yeah. Even small shoes, they made me grateful. And, you know, it's always different for everybody else. But personally, for me, I was able to learn a whole lot from not having a place to go. And I realized home is always where the heart is. And once we're able to figure that out, you'll be able to go farther. But you have to keep it in your mind that you're far more than what people are going to say and what people are going to think. Mm, you got it. Because when we die, where do we, you know what I'm saying? Where do we go? I'm just saying that's a whole nother thing. But... You know, you, you don't have the home or anything else. You just have yourself. So when you said home is where the heart is, that really is that inner yourself, being at peace with yourself. You think that's really the, that's really the key? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Miss Lady. That was deep. No problem. <laughs> that was deep. Wow. I got to rewind this and listen to this again. Seriously.